What's going on fellow web developers? My name is Tyler Potter and in today's video we're getting back to some JavaScript but along with some Laravel. Now we're going to be building this Laravel API based Vue.js application and it's going to be a user management system so as you can see here we have a bunch of different users. So I go add a team member, let's call this one uh, Michael. Um, and this is going to be Mike at test.com and his password will be test1234 Then we can click add and it'll go boom cool. Yeah, check your passwords. Thanks Chrome I know it's not a secure password. Thank you. Michael knows this and there we go We've now got Michael added to our list of users now We can update Mike and he actually wanted his email to be Michael at test.com So there you go. We've updated it and you can see it's been updated there now Let's say actually, you know what Keith we don't want you. I'm sorry, mate. You gotta go you, you don't you're dot SA, you're an at SAO, you're not a dot test. We only have dot tests here. See you later. Goodbye, mate. And there you go. Now this export members, team members, doesn't actually work. It's not something I've set, but it is something I've left there because it would be cool to see you guys set this up and create a really cool um Export team members too, so you can export a list with the name and emails in a in a massive uh, CSV list. So that's a challenge I've left open to you guys. But for now, guys, let's crack on and build this user management system. Today's video is brought to you by Cloudways, a managed cloud hosting platform for PHP based applications. Cloudways takes over all server management and security hassles to let you solely focus on your business. Their custom stack provides performance boosts, managed backups that keep your apps safe and a staging environment that lets you test code without breaking the live site. Plus, pre-configured composer and integrated git make deployments a breeze and you get a choice between five top cloud providers including DigitalOcean, AWS, Linode, GCE and Fulture. With Cloudways, you not only get flexibility, but peace of mind. So if you're an agency or an e-commerce store owner, Cloudways is a great fit for all your managed hosting requirements. And I particularly like their slogan too, moving dreams forward. It fits what they do, don't forget to use promo code TylerP to get up to one month free hosting with $15 free hosting credit. Okay guys, so to get started you're gonna need Composer installed and then we're gonna do Composer Create Project Laravel forward slash Laravel. And then we gotta give this a name because this is gonna be the API to our application I'm just going to call it API and I'm just going to hit enter now this is going to run and it's going to create our Laravel project which is going to be great now while that's doing that we need to actually make sure you have my SQL running and if we just stretch this out here we can go localhost forward slash php my admin now in here we need to create a new database so I'm going to create new and what I'm going to write in here is probably saying simple let's say user manage or user Laravel Laravel YouTube something like that use that user Laravel YouTube let's create that makes sense there you go so now we've got that created so no one's has done let's go back here and as you can see it's now finished so let's clear this let's open this up in oh well, actually we need a CD into API first um, and let's open this up in VS code now once we've opened up this we want to instantly go to our .env file and update the database connection. Now we're going to be connected by MySQL on localhost. The only thing we need to change is the database, which is so we need to pre-fill this one with user, yep, yeah, user Laravel YouTube. And then the password will also be root. Hit save, click close, and that should now be done. Now, what we next need to do is we need to press Control Option T inside of here. Please ignore the bright blue. I don't don't know what I did. I kind of broke it, and now it's stuck bright blue. Um, I need to figure out how to fix that. But for now, I can understand what we're doing. So let me just write out some things. In here, we just need to say uh, PHP artisan migrate, as you can see here, and we need to hit Enter. So now, what this can do if we go into our database our migrations, you'll see there is a bunch of migration tables because when you create this project in uh, using the Composer Laravel Laravel boilerplate, 
uh, you get given the user tables migrations. As you can see, it's going to create a table with an ID, a string name, a string email, which will be unique, a timestamp, which will be email verified at, and string password, uh, remember token, and timestamp. So this creates our thing, and also it will drop it if needs be. Um, so let's close that and if we go into our app and our models you'll see there's also a user model already with fillable so we only need to fill in our name email and password um, but we can also oh and hidden so which are protected and then this as well so there you go so let's just close that now if we didn't have to use this model here we would have to create our own by um, basically running a php make model and then we'd say user and then M to create the migrations too. And that would create our user. But because we already have it and it's already set, we can just run PHP adds and migrate. Hit enter and there you go. That's not all created. So if we go to our use here and we give this a refresh, you'll see when we click into use the Laravel that we have all the tables already set up and ready to go, which is awesome, especially our users table. And you can see the structure here, which is nice. Already set up and ready to go. So let's go back into our API. So back in here, once we've done our PHP migrations and that, we don't need the models or anything like that. We just need to go into our roots and API. And this is where we're going to start creating our API. So what we're going to need inside of here is up here. We're going to actually have to include a few things. So we need, we've got the request, which is fine. Uh, we're also going to use... Oh, actually, no, we're not. What we're going to do is we say use under here, and I'm just going to say uh, app backslash models backslash user. And we're also going to have use illum illumite. <laughs> illuminate. <laughs> it was, I was nowhere near when I said that. Illuminate support backslash facades backslash hash because we're going to need to hash our password and this will allow us to do that so these are all we need to you the namespaces we need up here now to get started we're going to need to we can delete this one we don't need that authenticate or authenticate root um, and in here we're going to basically we need to create a user don't we so we're going to say root post and we're just going to say user so all our api will be prefixed with users um, and then we're just going to say create and then we're going to have a function, which, oh, function, if I can actually write, function request. And then we're going to pass through the request here and turn that into a function. Cool. So in here, what we can do, so this request basically is the request we get. So when someone sends a, uh, a API request to this route, we will get a request, which will have all the data we need. So we're going to say in here, data is equal to request dollar all and this what this is going to do is going to get back all the fields that have been sent to us so we're going to be sent every single one we're then going to say if user where and then we're going to say email and then we're going to do equals that's the com comparator type so we're doing we're saying we're going to check if email is equal to data email then we're just going to say does it does it exist by doing exists and if that comes back true um that means it already exists and we can't continue so in an else statement here we're just going to say return and we're going to structure our um responses to the api or to the client side with success every single one will have an ex success this one will be false because this means there is already a user there we're going to have a response and every single error we have will say error and it will pass through a singular error now this will be the user already exists and up here we can just write um, user is equal to user so the user we're using here is actually the model we're pulling through here which is actually in our app uh, models user right there and that's what we're pulling through to use this here which will give us the ability to go oh create and we can pass through an, an array and then here we can say name which will be equal to data name we're going to go email which will be equal to data email 
oh, these should be uh, commas, not uh, semicolons. And then here we're going to say password. But now with password, it's not the same thing. What we need to do is we need to say hash, make, and then we're going to pass through the data passwords. Now, the reason we're doing this is because... Basically, the password will come through as plain text, and we, if we try to save that directly in here, it's going to save it as plain text. Now, we need to actually hash the password so it doesn't go back as um, uh, part test one, two, three. Instead, it comes back as a bunch of random letters and numbers, um, which is basically hashed and means it's secure. So there we go. So now we have that user going through. We're then going to have an if statement and say if empty user ID. We're going to return success is false because that means the it's empty and it hasn't worked. And we're going to say response error error um, and unexpected error has occurred. I don't even know if that's how you spell occurred, but we're just going to go with it. So there you go. So we're going to do that hit save um, because basically this means it's not gone through there's something else wrong and we need to figure that out so that's fine now in here we're going to have a success because if that is true so if we do have it we can then say true and this one will say response is equal to user so this time we're going to pass back the actual user we've created um, and there you go so that is that um, we need to obviously put a semicolon at the end there and there you go so that is our and the semicolon here Semicolons are missing everywhere. There we go. So now we have our first root, which is our create root. So we could actually create a new user. So let's actually test this root out. Um, so let's do control option T. Let's clear here and let's just run PHP artisan surf. Hit enter. And that's going to give us this root here, which we're going to need to copy. Oh, okay. We're doing it on 800. 8001 because apparently we've already got one running i don't know how um, and then we're going to open up postman and what postman does is it allows you to basically run api requests now if you need to get that i will try to put the link in the description if i don't remind me and i will pull it down there so let's just put this over here so we can actually see it here so let's create a new request let's just close these ones let's just don't save don't say i don't need any of these Okay, guys, so I've managed to get actually running on 8000 now. It's just something else is there. It just makes it a bit easier because I know what that is. We're going to say forward slash API because every single Laravel request will be pre or uh, not prefixed, but suffixed with API. And then we're going to pass through users, which is our next parameter here. So you can see users. And then we're going to do forward slash create. Now, as you can see here, this needs to actually be a post request because we'll be making a post request to this. And inside our body, we're going to need some JSON. And in here, we just need to pass through a name. So let's just say Tyler. An email address, which again can just be tyler at test.com. And finally, a password. And my password is super secure. It's test123. So let's hit um, send, and as you can see here, we got a success true, a response with user name Tyler, email Tyler at test.com and created at. There you go. So that now means we have successfully created our user, which is pretty awesome. So let's actually uh, get on to the next one. So now how do we get these? So let's go into our API again. Let's close this. And underneath here, we need another root, which is going to be a get request this time. And in here, we're going to say slash users slash all. Now this is going to off, yeah, all. And then we're going to have a function again with request. Actually, no, this one doesn't even need a request because it we're not going to get anything. This is just a get request. So all you need to do is make a request of this to get all the users. And then in here, all we're going to say is now in Laravel, they make it super easy with their model. So we just say users is equal to user all. And then we just now say if empty users, we can say return success is equal to false 
response is equal to error, no users found. Don't forget your semicolon there. Else, we could just return. And this one means we're going to be successful. We don't actually need the else in theory. We could just say return. We could say success is equal to true. Response, response, if I could spell, is going to be, again, users. And this time I'm going to pass through all the users. Hit save. Don't forget your semicolon like I keep doing. I'm going to do that multiple times. And there you go. That is all we need to actually get our users. So here we could just say get all users. And up here we could just put a create a user. There you go. So that's where we're at. So let's go back to Postman. Let's create a new request. Let's just copy this for a base. And let's just swap the create for all. And all we have to do here is hit send. And there you go. It gives us our array of users here, which is me only at the minute. But if we create another user, let's say um, Keith and Keith. A has the same password, click send, it created a new user. So if we go over here, we click get, you can see we've got both our users in there in the array, which is awesome. So we now got get all users. But what happens if we just want to get one user? So what we can do here is we can say root. Again, we can say get. And this time we can say users forward slash, sorry, users forward slash, and then we can pass through an ID. Now there's a parameter, so we can paste anything in here, but we're, by using these parentheses or these curly brackets and ID, we're actually telling, um, we're telling it to say, hey, this is a parameter, we want to be able to get this inside of our request. So what we're going to do is say function, we're going to say request, request, and then we're actually going to pass through the ID here. Uh, so that's, we're actually going to get this ID. This ID is going to be equal to this, whatever value we pass after users. So in here we can say user is equal to user, find, and then we can pass through the ID. And then we can say if empty user, we can just say return. You know what, let's just literally copy this paste this in here and just change this to no user found, copy the response and just put in here true and this time we're just going to say user is going to be equal to our user. So there you go, we now have enough of root, so let's go try it out. Let's copy this one, paste it in here, but this time swap this out for an ID. So as you can see we've got two IDs here, let's go for number one, which is me. We're going to say one and we're just going to hit send. And as you can see, it returns just me. Now, what happens if we want number two, which is uh, Keith? There you go, we get Keith. What happens if we don't, We let's go for an error here. You can see it says here, false, no user found, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. So, so far, we have three routes already. So, this one is going to be called get a single user. And there you go. So, the final two requests we're going to do is going to be delete a user. And then update user. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to say root delete. And I'm going to say forward slash users forward slash delete. And once again, we're going to be using a parameter inside of our URL here. And we're just going to say function request request ID. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to say user is equal to user again find by id and then we're going to say if not well basically we're going to say if not empty or if empty oh god user uh we're just going to say success is equal to false um and the response is equal to error user could not be deleted mainly because he didn't exist most likely but then else we can just say uh, success is equal to false oh sorry to tr success is equal to user delete here and then our response will be equal to message and in the message we could just say user 
deleted. So you might be wondering why we're doing this slightly different to the ones we've done up here. Now the reason being is because I just wanted to show you a different way of run, writing out the returns. Um, but here we're just saying if the user is empty, that means the user couldn't be deleted because he didn't exist. Um, that ID wasn't right, so they need to pass through a better ID. Else we're going to check if the user is deleted. So if you do user delete, it will return a true or false. It will say yet true if it um, deleted it, else false if it did not. And then we're going to pass a response, user deleted. What we're going to do after that is we're just going to say return. And now we can say success is just equal to um, success. If I can actually type. And then response is just equal to um, response. There we go. And basically that way, by doing it this way, we don't have to write out return multiple times. We just have to write it out once. So I just wanted to show you that way of doing it because I think it's a lot cleaner. But I wanted to show you also this way as well just so you knew how to do it. So you can pick which way you actually want to do it. So in the roots now, we're going to have the, uh, or sorry, in the update, we're going to have forward slash users, forward slash update, forward slash ID. And I do know I have forgotten to show you the delete working. So I'm going to do that just after we've wrote the request. Essentially, this is, once again, just the same as what this is. So let's go like that. Bam. And let's just leave that at that for now. Oh, okay. It's not going to let me. Oh, because we're missing an F. An F. There we go. So let's go try out the users delete. So let's go back here. Let's create a new route. Again, let's just copy this. And how do we do it? So it's forward slash delete. So after users, we're going to have a forward slash delete. And we're going to delete number two, which is Keith. And we've got to change this to be a delete request. And all we do now is hit send. And it says here success true user deleted. So now if we go back to get all and we click send, you can see there's only one of us. Now if we try to delete one which doesn't exist, say number four, click send. It's a user could not be deleted. So there you go. Perfect. So now that is working. So now inside of the update route, we're just going to say data is equal to request. And we're going to say all. So we're going to get all the um, elements we pass through. And now we're going to do user is equal to user find ID. So now we're going to try and get it from the ID we pass through in the update. And then we're going to do a for each loop. Because what we need to do is we need to go, we need to say, um, for each data, so the actual request or value we've passed through in JSON or to the body of the request, um, we need to actually loop through each key and actually match it to the data. So now we're going to say user key is equal to value. So what we're saying here is for every single key we pass through um, or for every um, request we pass through. So if we pass through the name and email, it's going to loop through and say, okay, we want to update the email and it's going to pass that through here. So it's going to check the user email and it's going to set it to the value of the new data we requested. And then if, if we don't send through anything else, that's fine. It will just update that one. Um, but if we send for enough, it will then loop through again and it will say, cool, we want to update the name too. So the name here, and then we're going to pass through the value. And that's how it works. So that after here, we just want to go result is equal to user save. So what we're going to do here is it's just going to check if we've saved it. So this should return true or false again. So we could just go return success, which will be equal to result. And the response error, which also not error, user this time. Because we actually just want to check if the user comes back. Uh, we're just going to set it to user. And there you go. So what we're doing here is we're just saying success is equal to the response we get from this, which will either be true or false. And then the also ID success. And then the response here will be our user we've just updated. So we know what's, if it's been updated or not. And there you go. That is that done. And that is all our API routes. So let's go and test the update first. Let's, let's go into, well, let's go into this one or the delete method, sorry. Copy this. Paste that in there. Now change this to a put because we used a put here. Um, and now instead of delete, let's call update and let's say number one, which is me, update. And in the body, now we just want to go raw and we want to say JSON 
Now in here, we can just pass through, uh, let's just say my name. So we're going to update my name and it's going to be from Tyler to Tyler Potts. And we're only going to update the name to start. So let's click send. And as you can see, it's come through. My name is now Tyler Potts. So let's go to get all click send and you can see it now comes back with the new data and the new updated at time. Let's go back to put and let's now actually update the email address as well. So let's say email and let's change it from Tyler to test. Let's say Tyler dot um, not test dot com. I kind of like it one and no test dot com no test dot com. Uh, let's click send and you'll see it's now updated it with Tyler at no test dot com. Um, and we can then reverse this as well. So we can just say back to Tyler and test send and there you go. And that is everything we need just for our API. So there's all the, the usefulness of the API. We have set up the create a user, the get all users, get a single user and delete user and finally update a user. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up a few JS application now um, where we're going to actually create the UI um, which will look like this um, and we're going to basically create it and create all the components. So let's quickly get started with that. Okay guys, so I'm back in the uh, directory here. If I do LS, you can see we have the API here. Now in here, I'm going to run few create and I'm going to call this client. Now, um, obviously you need to have few installed. Um, you can install it via NPM or whichever. You can check out the documentation. Again, uh, these are all stuff I've covered on my channel before. So if you do need to know anything about this, you can take a look back through some of my videos. And here we go. So let's just hit few create client. And this is going to generate or basically ask us a few questions. Now we're going to manually select pre features. And I don't know why I did that because now we're just going to go next. We're going to click yeah. We're going to use um, the composition API for a bit. Of this so we're going to use uh, f few free, uh, and then we're just going to pr pretty much hit enter through the rest of these. And there you go. Now this is going to create our base few JS boilerplate, which we're going to use. I still have the API running in the background, so if I go here, you can see it's still running. It's all set up, and obviously we also have MAMP, which is my um, here I'm using MAMP Pro, but MAMP, which is running for my MySQL still here. So guys, let's just uh, wait for this to do its thing and I'll see you once that's done. Okay guys, as you can see here, it's now done. So we need CD into the client and then from inside the client, we need to, we can open up in VS Code by running code dot. And then once this opens, we can just quickly full screen this. Um, and well, we're gonna press Control Option T and inside of the terminal, we'll go run npm run surf. Hit enter. And this is going to start our development surfer so we can actually see what it looks like. So let's wait for that to start. There you go. Now, once we're there, we can option click this. And as you can see, this is what we start with, this little application here. So let's go into our app. Let's go into our components and delete the uh, hello world. Let's go in here and delete the hello world from in here too. And also the image tag. We're going to delete this in the script and the components. And finally, we're going to delete the styling within here too. I'm going to hit save and we're going to have nothing in here. We're going to get an error because we need to have an element inside of our template. So what we're going to do is we're just going to have a dot dashboard. Also, I like to have four spaces, not two, and then dashboard. And then in here, we're going to have a header component, which we're going to go get in a second. So hit save. And oh, if we go back here, you can see, there we go, just a blank page. If I just put in here test, um, you can see test has appeared right there. Perfect. So what we need to do is we need to set up our header. So inside of our header right here, we'll just create a header. Now this is going to throw an error because we don't actually have that component yet. Uh, but in our components, we're going to have a header. And we're just going to say import um, header from... And then we're going to use the at symbol, which is basically the uh, Vue.js root uh, components forward slash header. Just like that. So inside of our components, we're just going to run header dot view. And I'm going to just hit enter. And there you go. We've got this new one. Now we can type in view here and it'll give us a default template. Now the reason that works is because I have something called 
Future installed as a Future by Pine Wu installed, and this allows me to use some quick snippets like that. Also gives me syntax highlighting and all the fun things about it. Let's close this bottom thing off here. So now within our header, in our template, we just want a header which is going to say H1, it's going to say the system. Now inside of our styling here, we're just going to put header, display block, we're going to give it a padding of 16 pixels, a background color, uh, our far dark, we're going to get set these variables up in our root or in our app.view in a moment and then we're going to have a header h1 color fff and font size of 28 pixels. Hit save, if we refresh you should see nothing there because it's white and it's there. So let's go back to our app and add some styling in here to give it some base styling. Now this is actually going to be a bit of uh, CSS, so I'm actually going to copy um, all this CSS and paste it in so we don't have to waste time doing that. But as you can see here, we added our roots, um, our variables. I've added in some resets using Fire Sans font. Um, we just set a default color on the background. Um, <coughs> we've overflowed our main in case anything overflows. And some button resets and some input resets and then we've created our own button style here as you can see we've got a standard button with transition a huffer and then an outline version and a button small and then a button alert um, and also button group which allows us to group them together and just a few more utilities there so there you go that's kind of where we're at so now if we go back to our thing here you can see the system and it's right there i'm actually going to put this up here so we can swap between these really simply just like that there we go let's just do it like that there we go that looks good enough all right cool so we've got the system in place um but that's not exactly anything to show that's just our header um the next bit we need to work on is inside of our app here and we're just going to go under the header we're going to have a main and in here we're going to have a toolbar so let's go and create our toolbar so from here let's go to our um, components right click and we'll create toolbar.view now the toolbar is just going to have our like ads um, add a user sort of functionality and stuff like that so once again just a few template here we're going to have a diff with the class of toolbar if i can type right toolbar we're gonna have a h2 which says team and then we're gonna have a button group and we're gonna have a button dot button which is going to say add team member and then we're going to have another button oh, another button dot button dot button outline which is going to say export team there you go just like that and then inside of our export well we're going to leave that for now inside of our style we're just going to have a toolbar and inside the toolbar we're going to have a padding of 16 pixels a display of flex and align items off center and a justify content space between and then i'm just going to get i'm going to style the h2 quickly we're just going to use a variable of dark um font size 32 pixels and that's that's not what i asked for is it come on <laughs> font size of 32 pixels and a font weight of 400 font weight of 400 there we go Let's go back to our app and let's import toolbar. So we're going to say toolbar and we're just going to put these in here. There we go. Now, if we go back to our CSS, you can see here we have the system and now we have our toolbar at the top here. So we have add team members, nice and useful, and export team um, and our little team logo here. So it's a little toolbar, it has a little title and then it has. Um, the two buttons we well one of the buttons we need the other one i'm leaving up to you guys to figure out which i think will be a fun little task and if you do manage to do it don't forget to tweet at me uh, i think that'd be really cool cool so back in our app dot um view what next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to set up the users so the team um so let's create a new component well actually in here we can just might as well add the markup in already we're going to say team and we're basically just going to copy this and paste paste and paste and now in our components, we're going to have team.view. And we're just going to say view. Save there, just like that. And that is now in there, ready to display. So inside of our temp team template here, we want a dot team. <clears throat> we're going to have a team 
members with the class of table because we're going to create a utilities table class um, and then inside of here we're going to have a table header which is actually a table row and then we're going to have a table column which is going to be called name another table column which is going to be email and then one more which is going to be actions which is actually going to say table actions in here now under here we're going to have another table row um, and this table row is going to be also a member and um, well for now that's just going to be that so we're going to say in here table column again um, dot name which is just going to be let's say Tyler or you know what, let's do Jeff Bezos Bezos how if you say his name there we go his name will be Jeff at Amazon.com uh, and we're going to say email and finally we're going to have the actions column actions um, and then here we're just going to let's remove uh, this bring it down and we're going to have a button group and inside the button group we're going to have dot button dot button small which will be an actual button here um, hit enter and then in here we're going to say update and we're going to copy this and we're going to say button small button alert which will just say delete Ooh. delete Ooh. if I can spell delete and then inside of the class list as well we're going to have group end which is just a way to send them to the, e the, the back uh, so let's go to our app here and as you can see this is looking interesting it's not exactly there yet but you can see we've got our buttons and that floating around so let's go add in the table styling now once again this is actually quite a lot of styling and i don't really want to bore you with all this so i'm going to paste this in but here you go we've got our team which is as a padding our table row which is just a flex aligning center a table column which is basically flexing to three percent or 33 percent which is a third of the um the row or the table um padding 16 pixel color far gray and then we're adding in a few more styles here so the every other um, table row is actually a lighter color so let's go back and there you go this is now looking really nice you can see we've got a header with a background color and also um this here so if we added in another jeff bezos uh let's go up here go down there save and go back you can see it's now a slightly different tinted color to give it some variation cool so we've got this but now how do we display our team members here well there's actually a few things we're going to need we're actually going to need some props inside of our app here we're actually going to need to basically set up a setup in here so underneath our components what we're going to do is we're going to go and say setup <clears throat> and in here we're going to say const users is equal to a reference of an array and now we need to import that reference we need to say import ref from few so now we can use reference um, we're actually going to need um, we're going to have a constant here called fetch users which is equal to an asynchronous call to our users dot value which is going to be await and then we'll create something called the api controller where we're going to actually handle all our api calls and we're going to say fetch users which will be one of the features oh we need to set equals now api controller doesn't currently exist um also here these are like the wrong there we go fix that bring them up bring it all up there we go sorry tabbing was off there so now we've got fetch users we just need to return users and fetch users here um, but this isn't going to work just yet we need to actually go set up api controllers so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it controllers now inside of controllers we're just going to say api.js and in here what we're going to do is we're going to say const api base which is going to be the base value for our api which is http 127.0.0.18000 now you need to put in whichever um or forward slash api as well don't forget about that and that's where our api call is going to be made from um and this obviously needs to match what we're running right now so if we go in here you can see it's running right here 
and that's where we need to go and then we need to uh, suffix it with uh, API because that's what it needs we're then going to say export default and in here we're going to say we're going to create a new method called fetch users which is going to be equal to an arrow function which will return a fetch call to API base plus users slash all like we did and then we're just going to say response is equal to response.json because that will, that basically will confer it from a like the status code and that to um, to actual data and then we can say data is equal to um, if data.success because if you remember in our API let's just close this let's go to our API here if we go to the top here we can shut the sidebar you can see inside of here we return successful or success so we could check if it's successful and if it is we will return our data.response.users else we're going to throw our data.response.error and now and after this we could do a dot catch where we could pass through the error we get and we can just say alert error to catch it and if you normally you'd handle that but for now we won't so there you go so we've got this all in there and that's all we need for the fetch users method so now if we go back to our app here and we scroll down we can now after our setup we can call mounted which is going to be a method and we can say this dot fetch user so once we start we can call fetch users to actually get our user values um, which will bring them all through now in our team we're going to need to pass through the users so we're going to set this to be our users and now inside of our team we can actually go in here and say props users just like that and we can now go up to our team member or our member and we can say fee for using a for loop user in users and we can set the key to be bound to user.id now if we hit save and we go back to our api we've got our api control is not defined so if we go back to our app we actually need to import now our api control. so we can say api controller from and we're going to do at slash uh, controllers slash api hit save and then we go back there you go it's now working now you can see we actually have one user in here right now um so let's actually update the name so in here we're just going to put the we're going to say user dot name and then we're going to use the template strings again and i'm just going to say user dot email hit save go back and there you go we've got if we refresh at tyler at tyler at test.com so there you go that's nice now if we go and make a change in here we could actually add a fee if or sorry not to this to the actual table at the top here we could say fee if users dot length is more greater than zero show this else don't now after this we could have a a dot no team and we could say fee else and we can say paragraph no team available there you go so if we go back we have our team but if we delete our member which we can't actually do here so we need postman back open here we could actually go to let's delete number one and hit send now if we go to get all users quickly you'll see there's nothing there so if we come back in we refresh you can see there's no team available so let's go back here let's create tyler from tyler at test.com let's just hit run and create we've got tyler let's create a second one keith keith at test.com hit save and now if we go back and we refresh you can see we now get tyler and keith both of us are now displaying so that's got we now can display them right so they're displayed but now how do we actually add a team member or delete one well let's quickly set up the add team member so let's go back in here let's go to our components and we're going to create a new component called user form dot few now we're going to this is going to be a multi-purpose form this form will not only add a new user but it will also update users so we can use it for both so we're going to create a user form 
And inside here, we're gonna create a form overlay. Um, and then after this, we're gonna create, we're gonna actually have a form with the class of form. No action, but we will have a at submit dot prevent is equal to nothing for now because we don't want it to submit anywhere. Now, once we've done that, we just need to basically put in here H, oh, that's the wrong one, H3. We'll say user form. We're going to have a form group, which will have a label. And in the label, we're just going to have a name. We can say name. We'll then get, oh, excuse me, capital. And then we're going to have an input of type text, which will be name, name. <coughs> And this is where we'll have a class of form control. There we go. So now we've got that. So if we go, well, we can't actually see it yet. So we'll, let's fill it all out first. So we'll create a second form group where we'll just duplicate this one. And in here we'll have email. And we'll say email, email, and then email. Email. There we go. <laughs> we finally got it at the end. And finally, we're going to have one more. This one is going to be our password. Password, again, password, password, and finally, password. There we go. So now we have a bunch of different fields, and at the end, we can just put an input of type submit with the value of, um, for now, we're going to have add, but we're going to make this dynamic later on, so it says add or update. And then we're just going to have the class of button on this, just like that. And that's all we need right now. Um, so in the styling, again, I'm going to actually uh, paste this in because we don't want to be spending our whole time styling. But as you can see, it's just user form. It's a fixed element that sits on the full screen because uh, it's a pop up. Um, we get user form element and all this stuff in there. So now inside of here, we can actually get the for user form. Oh, wrong one user form and we can actually pass that through there and now under here we can actually just say oh, under team sorry we can just say user form like that hit save and if we go back you can see the form is now on screen obviously we don't want this displaying the whole time so we're going to set that up in a second not to display but there you go we've got our user form we can type in here um, and actually get some messages through and we have a little add button there. Nice. So let's actually uh, get this hidden when, um, well, when by default, we don't want it showing. So in here, we're actually going to have a fee if, and we're going to set something called form active. Um, so we're going to go into our setup here. We're going to have a const called form active. I'm going to set it equal to a ref of false by default. So now if we pass this down here you'll see it's no longer on screen by default which is nice if we change this to true hit save you'll see it now appears so let's remove that back to false and there you go nice so we've got that but now we need an actual function to handle it so let's call a const toggle form is equal to an ID equal to false. Now, the reason we're doing that passing through an ID is because we're going to be, um, when we actually update a user, we're going to be passing an I3 to toggle it and fill it. But for now, we won't. We're just going to say form active dot value is equal to not form active dot value. So every time we call this function, it's going to open and close the form for us. Um, we're then going to say, um, well, for now, that will do. So let's just pass that through. And then once we've got toggle form through, we can actually go into our toolbar here and we can pass toggle form is equal to toggle form. Now, if we go into our toolbar, we can actually do add team member. We can actually get props. And this is going to be the toggle form. And then we can say at click is equal to an arrow function to toggle form just like that so if we now go back uh error id is assigned but value is never used oh my bad so sorry inside of our app down here we just want to log id if it exists there you go just so it has sang so it's not erring so now if we hit add team member you can see it shows but now we can't close it because we didn't add away so we're going to make it so the overlay 
So if we go back to our user form, well actually our app first, and we need to copy the toggle form and we need to pass it through to our user form. And then in our user form on our overlay, we want to add or and our props down here first. So let's say props, we're going to pass through our toggle form. And then up here, we're going to say at click is equal to an arrow function to toggle form, just like that. So now if we go back, we can now add team member and click out of the um, white. But if you click on the white, it will be fine. But if you click anywhere else, it will close the form for you. There you go. So now we can toggle our form on and off. But now whams if we want to actually or actually submit it, well, you know, actually get some new members. Well, let's go to our form here. And what we're going to do is in our script. So inside of our script here, we're going to basically call the setup um, a method here and we're going to call props. Now in here we're going to create another const user which is going to be equal to a reference of an object but what we're going to do is we need to obviously import ref from few, not value, few and we're also going to need to import our API controller from at slash component or controllers slash API Just like that. And then in our user here, so we've got our user now. Let's actually call a return where we just pass through our user. Um, but in here, we're going to get const. Well, we're going to have multiple methods. So we're going to have a constant called get user, uh, which is going to be equal to an asynchronous function. Um, and in here, we're just going to say, well, basically what we're going to do is we're going to say get user details. So when we actually go to update a user when we click on the update button there um what it's going to do it's going to pass through an id and we're going to basically get a user that matches that id and then we're going to have a const now add new user and this is going to be equal to an asynchronous arrow function again um, where we say let temp user equal await api controller dot create user this is something we're going to set up soon and in here, we're just going to say user.value.name. So we're going to get this user here. We're going to get user.value.email. And finally, user.value.password. Just like that. And then under here, we're just going to say if temp user, we're just going to say props.fetch users because we're going to have to recall the fetch command. And then we're going to get props.toggle form to close it. So let's pass this down here. And let's also pass this down here. Just like that. And then we should lose all our errors there. Cool. But we need to actually get these props through. So let's go over here. And we're just going to say fetch users. Um, and toggle form, which is for now. So let's go back to our app. And let's pass the um, fetch users function to our user form. So we're going to say fetch users equal to fetch users. Um, which I think is all we need to actually toggle the form, but we're also going to need a user ID. So we're actually going to pass through here, user ID is equal to user ID. Now we only need this user ID for when we actually have a, um, when we're actually updating. But again, we're going to bring it through now just so we have it. So we're going to say user ID, just like that. Go back to our app. And then inside of our setup method here, what we want to do is we want to create another constant underneath the form active, which is called user ID, which equal to a reference of uh, false or null. It's up to you which one you do. I'm just going to say false for now. Um, and then we're going to pass it through our return method here. There we go. So that's going through. So once we've got that, what we want to do is inside of our toggle form, we're going to set user ID dot value equal to false every single time this is called. The reason being is because that way it will reset it for us. We're then going to say if ID, we're going to say um, user ID dot value is equal to the ID we've passed through. Now, that means when we've toggled the form, we've passed through an ID, which means it's actually going to be an updating user form, um, which will allow us to... Um, basically display the user's correct information in the form areas which is fine but we just had to pass that through now just so we had it so let's go back to our user form 
and inside of our user form we've got add new user now up inside of our submit here we're going to need to do something a bit different so we're going to do uh, pref um, when we submit we're actually going to say if user id is equal to false add new user else we're going to have an update user method um, which we pass through so what's happening here is we're saying when we submit the form, if we've got a user ID, meaning it's, uh, or if we don't have a user ID, meaning it's just an add, we're going to add a new user, else we're going to update a user. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so down inside of our add new user, API control, control, create user, we actually need to go and create this API. So underneath fetch users, we're going to have create user which is going to take a name, an email, and a password. And if we just turn this into an arrow function here, we can then say if name, let's break this down. If name, email, or password, using the or methods here, are equal to nothing, then what we're going to do is we're going to return false because we need every single one of these. And we're actually going to set these by default to nothing. Just so if we don't pass them through, it matches this criteria here, which is fine. We're then going to return our fetch command, which will be API base plus users forward slash uh, create. With this time, we're actually going to pass through some methods or some options here and in the methods i'm going to pass through post we're going to then have headers which will be content type application forward slash json and i need to capitalize content and type here just like that and then after headers we're just going to have the body um, which is going to be equal to json.stringify and we're going to pass for an object with name, email, and password in it. Then after that, we're just going to basically get the response. So we're going to get the response from the server. We're going to convert that response into our JSON. We're then going to change the... We're going to get the data from that, which will be the return. And we're just going to say if data.success, then what we can do here is we can say return data.response.user else we could just throw our data.response.error and then we could do a catch which catches an error and if we get an error we just alert the error there you go so that's now that part done that's all create user needed so let's go to our user form and just have a look and make sure it's all good so let's go back to our form here make sure there's no errors now if we add one and we actually open up our console here so we can see. If I now say test, test at test.com, and then we can just put here test and click add, we should see a request. I don't even think the form was called, which is probably a good thing because that means we've done something wrong. So add new user up here. We're saying if user ID is equal to false, user ID. Are we passing user ID through? We are. Are we setting it to false by default? We are. We're returning it. Uh, all right, so I figured out what the issue was. It's actually because we've got our user here, which we're trying to pass through the foul use, but we're never actually binding the forms to it. So what we need to do is say fee model is equal to user dot name. We're going to copy this fee model and we're going to pull it on our email here which is user.email and finally for our password it'll be user.password like oh, password just like that all set and ready to go so now when we go back to our form here close this and close this we should now be our refresh add team member let's say um sally sally at test.com and we could just say test and click add now as you can see Ignore the change password, it's because we put test. You can see Sally has now been added as a user. So if we refresh, you can see she's always there. She's added and it's all set, which is awesome. So now we can add team members. But what happens if we want to update them? 
So one thing we need to do is on our form group here, we need to say fee if user ID is equal to false, then we don't show it. So now we should still see it here, but when we click update, we won't. Now in the value as well, we need to say, we actually need to bind this and we need to say user ID is equal to false or not equal to false in this case. Um, we're going to say update. Else we're going to say add. Save and once again if we go back and we click add it should all look the same but once we actually click on update it will change. So there you go. So we've now got that. So let's go back to our app.view and what we need to do is we need to pass through fetch users and toggle form to our team member here. And then inside of here, what we can do is we can go into our team and inside of our buttons here, well actually inside of our props, we can bring back not just users, but we can also bring back fetch users and toggle form. Now in here, we're gonna obviously have to import our API controller again from at slash controllers slash API dot JS or just API. So once we've added in our extra props here and we've got, we can comment our API control now because we won't need that just yet. But up inside of our buttons here, we can actually add an on click event that we could say at click is equal to an arrow function that says toggle form. And this time we're going to pass through our user.id. So as you can see here, we're inside this for loop, which we're going to get the user ID. And that's going to pass through there. Now we'll do the delete method at a later date, but for now we'll leave that like that. So now that's all we need to do. So we go back and we click update. You can see we're missing the password and this now says update. Instead of add team member, you can see it says this. So you can see we've changed the name. But now we actually need to pre-fill these with the actual current values. So to do that, we need to go back to our user form. And inside of our user form, we need to, where we've got our user here, and we have the method called get user, we need to replace this with a user.value is equal to an await. And we're going to say API controller dot fetch user. And this time we're going to pass props dot user ID. So how this is going to work, we're just going to check if we've um, actually got our, or we're basically just going to check when we've got our ID, we're just going to pass through this here. And to do that, we're going to get the mounted method. And we're just going to say this dot get user. Just like that. And that will call this straight away. Well, actually, we only want to do that if we have this dot user ID and it's not equal to false. So we just want to make sure we definitely don't have the ID before we try to get this else. This will error. So there we go. Now, inside of our API here, underneath fetch user, we're going to create fetch user, which will be another arrow function, which this time will be passed through an ID. And inside of our fetch user, We'll basically just say if ID is not equal to null, then we're going to return fetch API base plus users plus ID. We're then going to say dot then response is equal to response dot JSON. And then our last response will be data, which will be an arrow function. And we'll get a catch for the error. Um, just like that. Uh, let's actually put that in a proper thing. Because it won't match everything else. And then in there we'll say if data.success. What we're going to do is we're going to say return data.response.user. Else throw data.response.error. Just like that. So that should now throw an error if anything can if if it doesn't come through so back here let's go back and let's see if this works so let's go update tyler you can see it now pre-fills with my details if we click on update sally you can see it pre-fills with hers and same with keith which is perfect but now how do we actually update so what we need to do is go back to our user form and inside of our user form you can see at the at the top here we create this update user method 
which doesn't actually exist yet. So let's create const update user is equal to an async method. And we're actually just going to pass it through here in update user. Now, what we need to do is essentially the exact same as what this is. Let's also remove the console log there. So we'll just go copy this. And we're going, to swap, we're going to use, instead of the create user, we're going to create an update user, which is going to take a value, a name, and this time the final parameter won't be a password, it'll be a user ID. And now we're going to get a temp user, and we're going to say fetch users and toggle form again. So this time when we click update user, it's actually going to call this. So let's go to our API, and let's underneath create user, let's do update user which will be an arrow function that takes in a name, email, and ID. And essentially, all it's going to be is kind of a copy of create. So we're going to copy this. Oh, I actually deleted it. Copy that and paste it. And instead of password, we're just going to say ID. We're also going to set these equal to null as well. Also, not null to an empty string by default or return false um, and down here inside of the update user we're going to do the same thing so update and this time it's going to be update plus id which we pass through the method will be a put method the headers will be the same and the body instead of the password will just be name and email and then it'll be the exact same response as before just like that so let's go back to our app now and let's try it. So let's update Keith. Keith's name isn't Keith. He lied to us. His name's Mike and his email address is Mike at test.com. So if we click update. We have an error. So cool. Let's figure out where that error is coming from. So when, when it is an unexpected token at position zero. So let's have a look what we've done wrong um, or which I've done wrong, should I say? Um, so we check if we have a name, email, ID. We go to fetch API. We go to users update. Ah, I forgot to put a forward slash at the end of update. That's probably what the issue is. So let's try again. So this time, Keith, you're not Keith, you're Mike. Same with you, Mike. Let's click update. And there you go. He's now Mike. So now we can add a mem We can get all the members. We can add a team member. We can update them. Finally, we just need to be able to delete them. We don't want Sally. Sally, you were good when you started, but it's time to fire you, okay? So let me just build the functionality to do that. Let's go, let's start off inside of our API.js. Let's go down here. Let's create a delete user, which will just pass an ID through an arrow function. We're going to say if ID is not equal to null, um, we're just going to return a fetch request again with the API base plus users plus delete or forward slash delete plus ID. Here. We're then going to pass some options through um, and in these options we're just going to have a method of type delete and that's all we need. We then just need to just catch that so we're just going to say then response, well let's actually just copy this exactly like that um, and instead of the return data we're just going to return true and we're just going to say alert user removed successfully. Just like that for now. I think that works. And there you go. So let's go into our team. And we have a click button here. Um, and what we're just going to do is we're going to create a new function inside of our um, export here. So we're actually going to need the API controller here. We're going to create setup. And inside of setup, we're just going to say uh, we need to pass props through. Um, and, we need, oh, and we actually need to put a comma after there. And I'm just going to say const delete user is equal to an asynchronous ID um, where we go const success is equal to await API controller dot delete user, but with a capital D. And we're going to pass through the ID we get here, uh, which we pass through to delete user. We're then going to say if successful, right? So if we're successful, we're going to say props dot fetch users and we're going to call that method we're then going to go under this and we're just going to return delete user just like that we'll copy this and on our click method here we're literally going to have the same as the update but instead of um, actually toggling a form we're going to 
we're going to call the delete user method. So let's try this out. Let's go back. Let's refresh. Let's say, call Sally. You know what? You've done a great job for us, but you just you don't you're not you're not cutting it. All right, delete. User removed successfully, and there you go. So that, guys, is how you create a Laravel and Vue.js user management system. Now, my challenge to you guys is to implement an export team. So what you're going to need to do is create an endpoint in Laravel, which will be called export team or users or whatever you want to call it. And then you need to put everything into a CSV and create an endpoint where they can download this here now i'm not going to tell you any more than that but hopefully you can figure that out and if you do do drop me a tweet on twitter my twitter is in the link the link is in the description and if there's any links i miss from this video that i mentioned um and i forget to put them in the description please remind me and i will do that straight away but for now guys thank you all for watching this video you it's been an absolute pleasure you guys are awesome don't forget to smash that thumbs up leave a like it really helps hit that subscribe button if you want to see more and I will speak to you guys in the next video. Peace.